Thanks, Dr. Khan. Up next, we have Juliet. Juliet, if you'd go ahead and unmute yourself, please. Hey, Dr. Khan, I just discovered this year that I have the lipoprotein A, and the doctor prescribed me phenofibrate. Is, is that a good medicine to take? Yeah, so first of all, good for you for somehow getting tested uh, for lipoprotein little a. It's a simple blood test. Uh, number two, it's a risk factor. There are people with high cholesterol that never develop clogged arteries. There are people with high lipoprotein A's. And in my clinic, they're going to actually get very, very advanced checking of their arteries that don't have clogged arteries. But um, does phenofibrate lower lipoprotein A? It doesn't. And even in some studies, don't be disappointed, it actually has raised lipoprotein A. It's a prescription drug that's often picked in people with very high triglycerides. It's not often going to be very pick, picked by those of us that treat a lot of people with um, uh, lipoprotein A. Uh, let me say, it's been both, it's been described to do nothing uh, to raise lipoprotein A and occasionally, occasionally to lower it a bit. It's not the drug that's going to do much. Uh, there are people that have had dramatic drops in lipoprotein A. If we feel we need to treat it with niacin, hormone replacement therapy, L-carnitine, these are all described in my book, CoQ10. Truly, the calculations are we need to drop lipoprotein A if it's really high in a heart patient by about 75%. And that's most likely going to require these new prescription drugs that are about four years away from release. So we've got a little ways to go. But you know, the thing is, if you want to know if that's working for you, get retested in eight to 12 weeks. We've certainly had those drugs for 30 years. I mean, they're reasonably safe, but I wouldn't put them on my radar screen as a choice that I typically would look for for lipoprotein little a. Thanks, Dr. Khan. Uh, up next, we have Margaret. Margaret, if you'd go ahead and unmute yourself. Hi, Margaret. Hi, hi. Thank you so much, doctor, for taking my call. Um, real quickly, I'm 64 years old. And back in October, I had a calcium scoring test done. It came back as 529. And right then I started to complete, I started Dr. Esselstyn's plan. And um, in two and a half months, I got my cholesterol down to 105. Wow. I haven't had any oil, any animal products at all, just ch chia seed and flaxseed. But my cardiologist told me I really shouldn't have the calcium scoring redone because chances are it would be higher. Does that make any sense? It doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. How long ago was that first one? Sorry. It was done in October. Oh, yeah. October. I, I actually agree with your cardiologist. I wouldn't do it. You, you One, will be getting radiation. Number two you already have a kick in the butt and he has, or she has your cardiologist, some reason to encourage you to make big improvements. Number three, when you really look at the signs, there's not much data. Now, when I showed Dr. Ornish's data, that is a heart catheterization that lets you look at all kinds of plaque, soft and hard uh, and all, but it wasn't calcium scoring. We have very little information about, certainly in the short time you're talking about, that we one can drop calcium scores and we should drop calcium scores. A, a little different question than when I show you these in the carotid plaque. I think we're mainly um, uh, diminishing the, what are called soft fatty plaque accumulation. So I wouldn't repeat it. When my patients are abnormal, I generally don't repeat the calcium score. I base it on symptoms, stress tests, carotid studies, lab work. And if they're really insistent, do I have anybody in my practice that said, I'm going to go get another one and they've come back lower. They have, but they don't come back zero. Uh, you know, if you're a zero, you want to stay zero. So I actually agree with it. I would. Uh, and if you said your calcium score was 22, I mean, that is abnormal, but that's still um, closer to zero than it is to a thousand. Thanks, Dr. Khan. Up next, we have Denise. Denise, if you can unmute, unmute yourself, please. Sure. Thank you so much. I love listening to you. I love your podcast. I wanted to ask you some advice about coconut products. I think many of us in the whole food plant-based eating plan, we've heard about coconut oil, don't eat it, saturated fat. But so many of the recipes that our chefs put out there, even some of the doctors have coconut milk in it. 
or perhaps coconut mana. And for people who, you know, are still not at optimal numbers yet, I wanted to know what your advice is, you know, on a product like coconut milk or coconut mana. Yeah. So, I mean, truly coconut mana, even though I've owned two pretty big restaurants that had a big baking program, I'm not particularly familiar with. I mean, the most notorious one, of course, here's a raw coconut, which basically nobody eats in this country with any frequency other than maybe on a beach vacation. But, you know, we're talking about coconut oil, which is very frequently used in vegan baking in place of butter um, versus coconut sugar, coconut flour. Coconut oil is the one that's 100% fat of which 85% is saturated fat. Um, and there are people that are highly sensitive to adding that amount of saturated fat in their diet. Their cholesterol in three, four, five, six weeks can go up dramatically. They're called hyper absorbers of saturated fat. They might have certain genes called APOE4, or one that I have called the fat gene. Am I glad I have the fat gene? But I, I thank you, mom and dad. And it just makes me, I'm very intolerant of saturated fat in the diet. I know that genetically and I've seen it in my lab. And there's many people out there that are the same. They haven't been tested. So coconut oil is in general uh, recommended to be a no. And there is medical science. There's a, a big paper in a journal called Circulation in January, 2020 that looked at the uh, frequency of raising your LDL cholesterol by adding in coconut oil. And it's, it's almost an anticipated event and not one you really would invite uh, for sure. When you're talking some of these others, they haven't been studied the same, coconut flour, coconut mana. I mean, the thing is, if you, if you absolutely know you don't have heart disease, it's obviously a little less of a risk. If you do have heart disease and you want to gravitate that way, just get some blood work. I mean, if your cholesterol is 128 and you do some baking and cooking for a few months, well, if your cholesterol is 198, it didn't work so well for you. Get back on the right track. Uh, not everybody responds the same, and it almost takes that kind of experimental approach to really know how it's working for you. And if you're a heart patient, you probably want to be pretty precise about that decision. Thanks, Dr. Conop. Next, we have uh, Maya or Maya, if you would go ahead and unmute yourself. Hi, can you hear me? Claire is a bell. Thank you so much for the presentation. Um, my question is about saturated fat. Does it only have an effect on the amount of, on, on your LDL cholesterol, or does it on its own also have uh, effects on atherosclerosis? Well, right, much easier, good question. Much easier to study it on blood tests where there's been literally 50, 60 years and hundreds of studies there was, I think it was in um, 1997, it's called a meta-analysis. It was like 363 studies looking at saturated fat and blood results, like a lot of studies. And just the line relating saturated fat content and LDL cholesterol content is very strong. And one you probably don't want to uh, you know, drive up without uh, knowing it and without assessing that potential impact at all. Um, when you look at the actual arteries, that's just harder to do. Um, uh, so there are very few studies that have specifically asked the question, six months on a high coconut oil diet, uh, what are arteries like? Uh, we have the seven country study that looked at dying of heart disease. That's a little easier, frankly, than running a heart catheterization. So we do know there is that relationship between saturated fat and dying of heart disease. Uh, that has shown up over and over as a signal, you know, around the world. So I would be cautious and concerned, but it's very expensive to design the study that would answer the question you asked. So we just got to take all the data and integrate it. Low or no coconut oil will be the best for your LDL cholesterol. 